Okay. Hi, guys. Um, welcome back to Interact's Creator Stories podcast. Um, as you guys probably know, I'm Jessamyn Solana. Today is pretty exciting because we have someone here and... I don't want to be weird about not saying her name. Her name is Jessica Pereira. But what's really cool about this one is she actually recently started writing some guest posts on our blog. So we had to have her on here. Um, so Jessica, I'm going to let you also introduce yourself. But I want to give you guys a little bit of a background. Um, and yeah, so you graduated from college two years ago. And you started out, did you start out in marketing? Um, I know you mentioned public relationship relations internship tongue twister but tell me a little bit more about how you got started and then also like what you're doing right now yeah so um thanks for having me on um so yeah i, I graduated college about probably two and a half years yeah two to two and a half years ago at this point mm -hmm. so when i first went in it was for communication studies which i ended up graduating with but i wasn't really like sure exactly what I wanted to do yet and then I think about a couple years in I decided to do public relations so that was kind of like my main path um, and then once I graduated I took up an internship at a PR agency and I really liked it I mean I thought it was interesting uh, but I wasn't sure if that was exactly what I wanted to do yet because I also was getting more interest in like actual just like digital marketing and but both of them had writing in common so that's kind of why I wanted to do one or the other um so after that internship I still wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and um I was like taking you know like HubSpot I was taking like little HubSpot digital marketing courses and like mm -hmm. just kind of doing my own thing there and um I think about so then maybe a year or so after that or half a year or so I wanted to just do something completely different yeah. and um, I don't know I just got this weird feeling like I need to go out and try something completely new that has nothing to do with what I've been thinking that I want to do because I, I was getting in this path of like you know when you it felt so um, singular I guess mm -hmm. that's the word to say and like I wanted to let my brain just kind of have a refresh. Yeah. So um, I decided to go teach English in Thailand for six, oh, about six yeah. months. Yeah. And um, so me and my friend went over there and I was like, okay, like I've never really taught before. Mm -hmm. um, obviously different country, different culture, everything. So like it's perfect. And I also just had this interest in going to Thailand anyway. So I went there and that's, kind of where um, I started to do freelance writing. So about three or four months into my time there, um, I was thinking, because I knew I was going to go home soon. So I was kind of like thinking about what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I still wanted to do writing. And I still like digital marketing. So I was just like, okay, I know I want to do those things. But at the same time, it, I wanted to like start it right away because I was still in Thailand. So it's kind of hard if you're like, applying for a job and you know you're not going to be home for another four months or so it doesn't it's a little unrealistic for the most part sometimes it works but um I somehow I don't even know I just came across the freelance writing and I came across this her name is Elna Kane and she is a really popular freelance writer and she has like a little course and she has a ton of like useful um, articles for writers and I just like started reading through all of her um, blog, mm -hmm. blog posts, and I was like, okay, I think this is what I'm going to do, but at the, when I started, it was um, just going to be like a side gig, mm -hmm. and so I didn't really have like the thought yet of making it a full-time, but so that's how I kind of started, and um, so the first couple of months was just trying to make sample posts, like I was still kind of learning everything, doing the whole website, um, and it wasn't until I got home from Thailand this past March, I believe, when I started going like full on. So that's kind of like how I got started with that. Wow, that's crazy. So it's kind of wild. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. This is pretty recent. 
because you're saying March, like as in March this yes. year. Wow. Okay. That's yes. crazy because I've seen your writing and it doesn't seem like this is pretty recent. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess like my question from that is like, you know, you're in a whole other country, which is already different. It sounds like you're pretty comfortable with adapting, but I guess like what were your feelings in, you know, one – kind of deciding public relations wasn't for you and then deciding to go to a whole other country for some time and teaching what you're not comfortable with and then from there (laughs) having to also like go into another career and try to figure out what that is what what was that like yeah um I think when I realized things with public relations I guess I don't think I ever closed it off I always kept it open so like when I was looking for jobs before I went to Thailand, I would look for like kind of within digital marketing or content writing, but I'd also look within public relations. So I was like, well, it's open. Maybe I'll find um, an agency that I really like and it could possibly work. So that was kind of like, it, it wasn't my first choice, but it was always there. So, yeah. um, but I think going into teaching and then going into the writing that was definitely like a very uh, weird process but it worked because I in the beginning when I decided to go to Thailand I wanted something completely different like what I said before that would just refresh my brain because I was getting too focused on things I wasn't sure if I wanted to be focused on and I think going there and it being so wildly different Mm-hmm. And, like, having to suddenly learn how to, like, teach a bunch of little kids yeah. just put me in such a different mode that, you know, I was just focused on that for a solid, like, three months. And then after that, I started, you know, once I had extra time and I got a little more used to the teaching, it was like my brain suddenly started clicking things together. Like, oh, I could do freelance writing. I don't know. And the thing is with... I think the word freelance before had, I don't think it does anymore, which is great, but it has kind of a negative connotation. Like if someone was like, oh, I do freelance this, like your first um, thought might be like, oh, maybe they're just doing it part-time or um, you're not really thinking of them doing it like a full-time job and growing like they're, and also I never thought of it as like, it's my own business sort of thing. So Mm -hmm. I think that was like definitely a shift, but um, yeah, so then once I started thinking about freelance writing, again, it all just kind of clicked for me. So I think I just needed that time of doing something kind of out of my mind, like out of anything I could imagine, because it was such a different experience to kind of pull that back and, um, you know, start doing something again that I was much more familiar with. What was your process like? you know, being in something like your comfort zone, I guess you could say, like, you know, public relations, you studied it in school, you're starting this internship, and then you get to this point where you're like, this is maybe not what I want to do. It's not my favorite thing. So instead of like going further into it, what was it like? And what was your process of, okay, I'm going to do something totally different. And I guess also, what did that feel like? Yeah, um, it feels I think at first it felt um kind of exciting because if you're not super into something and then you know you're going to be able to do something completely different or it kind of like um, feels like there's more opportunity like oh maybe this will be the thing I want to end up doing and you kind of get like more hope and then after that there's always like another feeling a little later and you're like what am I doing (laughs) like why you know, this is something I'm used to, like, why am I shying away from it? It's kind of, um, it's, and then, then it starts to feel unfamiliar and a little scary. So, like, when I decided I didn't really want to do public relations or I wasn't sure, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Thailand instead. And, you know, I had, I didn't go to Thailand right away. I had to wait about maybe four or five months of, like, getting everything together and all the visa and all the programs and stuff. So I had that waiting period, which during that time I felt fine. I was still like really excited. And then once I was there, I think my first, I think when I first started teaching, 
I had that scary feeling. Like, what did I just do? I have no idea what's going on. Um, like, my mind jumped back, and I was like, I could have easily, you know, formed this different path that didn't, like, have to make me go this far out of my comfort zone. So I definitely had, like, a little freak out time. Yeah. But um, after that, you know, I was like, well, I'm already here, and I don't know, it's just like, after the freak out, you kind of calm down a little bit, and you just kind of go into this, like, work mode, I guess, that's the best way to put it, it's like, there's not really um, time to be freaking out about it all the time, you just kind of have to go with it, so after that, and then with the, you know, once I was still there, and I always knew I was going to come home, like, I knew that I wasn't going to be teaching there for super long, like some people end up doing. So I think because I knew that too, the transition when I, I started the freelance writing wasn't like as scary because it felt like I was going back in my familiar territory. Yeah. So, um, and then once I started in the freelance writing, it was interesting. I started getting like feelings and thoughts like this, I actually feel um, really good in, like this is something that I actually want to keep growing. And um, so that was new and exciting. So this is like definitely the path that I want to continue in and see, you know, as opportunities arise and like as it keeps going. But it definitely, um, I ended up finding something that works a lot more for me than the other two kind of things that I did. Wow, I love that. It's It kind of sounds like too, you're just really comfortable jumping into new things. So that's... <laughs> definitely something that I wish I had. I say the thing is I say that I do and then I go into it I like like what I said I like freak out I'm like what the like the adapting always and like it ends up being um a lot longer than I think I think in my head I'm like yeah I'm gonna do this 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 and then you go into it, but yeah, I guess, I, I guess I am more, um, open to it than usual, but there's still like, I don't know. It, it still takes me a while to always completely immerse. Like, even if you like, let's say you move somewhere different, I, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be fine. Even if it's just a different house, but it always takes me a little longer than I think to like adapt to the house, you know, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. It's like you do it. And then once you're there, you're like, <laughs> um, no, I get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Exactly. So a question that comes to mind is you did mention like how some people maybe not so much anymore, but might still feel like the word freelancing is has a negative connotation to it. What would you, I guess, like if there's someone out there listening and they're like, yeah, actually I have that same exact thought. Like I wanted to do some type of freelance job, but you know, people don't look at it as like an actual job. What advice, I guess, would you say to somebody where they're kind of in that same spot and they're thinking about it and they aren't maybe as quick to make that jump and they're still in that freak out phase? Yeah. Um, I think like your mindset towards what you're doing changes the whole game. So kind of like what I mentioned before, when I started, when I realized, and this is something I realized through reading other freelance writers, that they really, they run themselves as their own business. So they, you know, take time to um, think about what they're worth. Like, okay, this is what I can write and this is how much I'm worth. And they kind of stick to that. Um, and also finding clients that they want to work with, not just who they can, you know, find on a job board. Yeah. It's things like that. Once you start thinking of yourself like as an actual business and someone who can provide valuable work is when it all changes. Because if you go into it and you're like, well, I'm just going to, you know, try freelance writing, you know, I think your head could easily just think of it as a side gig, mm -hmm. think of it as being okay to only get like some, like some first jobs, you know, people will get like four cents a word and it's also charged by word, which, you know, over time you realize that's probably not the best way to do it. But, um, you know, you start, you like think that those things are okay. And like, I think that could be easy for someone to 
stay in that and never grow. But once you change your mindset and you kind of realize like, okay, actually there are a ton of companies that, you know, need, or they have some sort of content marketing strategy. They need this writing and it, you know, it gets like, it gets them a certain amount of traffic. It gets them a certain amount of leads, all these things. Then um, I think that's good. You could start like leveraging your business and like scaling it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So mindset's definitely like, I think the most important part. And just also, you know, at the beginning, since you're by yourself, I think this would be like any freelancer, any entrepreneur, whatever, like you're totally, you know, you have to kind of be your own cheerleader at first Mm -hmm. as like you first start. And then, you know, then you'll start to find other people just like you and you'll find like little online communities and stuff. Mm -hmm. But at first you have to like really have good self-discipline and also like encourage yourself to keep going because you know again if you have like a short-sighted um mindset about it it's going to be a lot harder than if you just believe like you can do it and also know that it's not always going to happen in like three months yeah because that's another thing you see sometimes you see stories and you see like these really crazy success stories and um you might have like higher expectations of when you're going to start making money and that's not always the case you know it's like everyone is different of when they start making a full-time income um and like getting like retainer clients and stuff so I think just knowing that too I love that you said that because that's something that um we run into even at interact right like there's you know one business where they're like wow like I grew this much and one of the worst things that can happen is like seeing that story and being like, okay, well, it's been about that time for me. And I, you know, don't have the same growth. So I think that is like a really great piece of advice just to keep in mind. And even when I'm talking to people, I'm always like, just remember, like it does look different for everybody. So I love that, you know, you have that mindset and you also are able to give that kind of advice to people. I think that's great. Um, I love that. So I have a couple last questions, but they're more of starting to wrap it up. Um, do you have any last minute things that you, you know, maybe like popped into your head as you were talking about your experience, any of, you know, those, any of those, I guess, like ways you were able to overcome some of your obstacles? Yeah. Um, so I guess going off of what I was saying like anyone who wants to, whether it's freelance writing or designing or whatever that is. And, um, with the whole like mindset thing, Mm -hmm. um, like that's, that was my biggest obstacle. And I think that is probably common for a lot of people is getting over the hump of, um, knowing how much you can grow. And like, I have, (laughs) like, I've looked at this past year, And there was a month where I made, it was like, I think it was July and I was starting to get really kind of scared. I was like, I don't know if I can like find stability in this. Um, I was still, I had like a client or two, but nothing super long-term yet. And um, the thing is, is when you start pitching and reaching out, there's a lot of like you like follow up with a client or a potential client and they're excited to work with you, but then suddenly it just stops. And it's like, you never hear from them again. And you'll get like a lot of those kind of, and I think maybe that happens if people are freelancing for years and years. I don't think it's like once you get established, it happens as much, but in the beginning, it's like, you think you get a chance and then suddenly it's like, they stop talking to you and it gets kind of discouraging. And um, so I think I was getting a little discouraged and um, just kind of like scared. And July, I looked, and, like, I made zero dollars. Like, I did not, like, I remember that month I was um, just in this limbo of, like, trying to figure out. And my plan, and I think that's another obstacle, is, like, if you get so stuck and just trying to plan what you're going to do instead of actually taking the action, like, I guess, so if you were going to be a freelance writer and you're like, okay, I'm going to start a blog and I want to pitch to this many clients and I also want to start building like relationships with um, just within my community to start getting connections. Well, you could say as much as you want, but if you don't actually like 
do the actionable things that go along with it, it mm-hmm. it's hard to move forward. And I know that was kind of my issue. I remember July, I was thinking of all these things, but then I just wasn't, you know, taking the needed steps. And then once August hit, I like got out of that weird funk I had and I started doing everything. And then suddenly things started popping up. So it's just like, that is definitely at least something that I've learned thus far, especially when you're getting in like you're in the kind of the beginning stage like you just have to um keep doing stuff keep building relationships like um and all that is really important I think as a freelancer so that was um something I thought of and um yeah I think that's about it though so far that was just like a big um transition I think for me Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think a lot of people will identify with that. Like, it's kind of weird how, I don't know, like I'm pretty new to hosting this podcast, but I like work for a company, but have experienced somewhat of a similar thing. And I think that's something that I can recognize that almost everybody goes through. So I think it is just important to talk about. And, you know, it is a big thing, but we just don't talk about it enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think it's like, it goes along with when you see all these articles of everyone's success. Like I made six figures in my first year and you're like, what? Like it can be intimidating, but exciting. And like, it's, it would be nice to have a little more like, I guess, um, transparency with everyone to also be able to say like their failures and just to show, like, I guess what you were saying is kind of the reason behind this podcast is just to show like, um, everyone is at different stages and, um, definitely we all fail. So, you know, as well as succeed, but it's nice to like, know that's okay. <laughs> and it's, yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Cool. So my last couple questions for you are more of a, a fun one. So first one is tell us three things about yourself that someone wouldn't normally know. Yeah. So Three things I wouldn't normally know. One, so these are kind of random. So I did girls wrestling in high school. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, I don't think people usually believe that I do, that I did wrestling. I feel like anytime I tell someone, they're just like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, yeah, I did. I swear. I wasn't good at it, but I did. Um, And then the second one is I got, I've been fired from a job. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I just wasn't meeting like the, um, it was like a content writing mm-hmm. job and it was like, I wasn't doing something correctly anyways, but ended up working for the best because now I'm able to like do my own thing. But that was another thing people probably wouldn't know. And um, the third is, let's see, I spent a year in Spain during college I did like a study abroad program yeah so that was fun that's awesome I always wanted to study abroad I was actually sorry I'm sidetracking but I was supposed to go oh no you're good I was supposed to go to Australia in college like my sophomore junior year and then they like canceled the program there like last minute and so oh no the counselor was like do you want to go to Denmark you need to decide by today and I was just it's kind of like one of those situations where I was like, uh, no, I, I, I know nothing about Denmark, <laughs> but now I wish I just did it. I wish I just went. So that's awesome. I think that's cool. That you did. Dang. Well, it's just like that. Yeah. That, um, split decision. Yeah, exactly. That gets scary. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can go one day after all this kind of simmers down. I know. And traveling's like one of the things that I always wanted to do and I've like done some traveling within the U.S. and then a couple of other countries but uh, yeah I just wish I could just go wherever and then you know this is one of those years where you're like I stop questioning it and just do it. 
Exactly. Well, that's good. That now you know, like, and I think now a lot of us know that just to take advantage when you can, because there's definitely going to be times where you literally cannot. <laughs> so, Seriously. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the last thing that I have for you, you did kind of touch on this a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit different because I want it to be more towards you yourself. So if you could go back in time and meet yourself at the start of it all, what's a single piece of advice that you would give yourself? Ooh. um, I think I would tell myself to start building um, relationships with Mm -hmm. any potential clients and not even just like potential clients, but um, also other writers, like right off the bat, because I think over time, that is what really helps when you're trying to like grow something on your own is um, just having and not like, and like making them genuine connections, you know, not just like a, um, a LinkedIn ad, and then you never talk to them again. But like, um, you know, you maybe have a conversation um and you start you know posting some of your own work and then you know join other like little they have like facebook groups and also twitter and everything like just joining communities where um people like you and they don't have to be in your um exact career but like anyone that's kind of like-minded just i think joining anything like that off the bat is really helpful because then you get feedback and you'll get like potential clients out of it um, and just over time, you kind of feel a little more supported too. So then it's not, you're not completely like, you don't feel like you're completely on your own mm-hmm. when you're starting something. So yeah, I think that would be anyone, if they're like just starting out, I would definitely recommend that. It's never too early to just, you know, kind of dip your toes and you can kind of see what people are doing and mm-hmm. get ideas from them and then, um, just continue to grow from there. I love that. I think if there's a common thing that I've noticed so far that people talk about, it's like, you know, being a part of a community. So I think that's a great piece of advice. And I think, yeah, like, especially with some of the struggles that people go through when they are trying to like start their own thing, like it's nice to have other people there. I love that. Cool. Yeah, exactly. All right. So that's all I have um, for myself. So thank you so much, Jessica, for being on with us today. Um, I loved your story and thank you for sharing it with the world. I know sometimes it's scary, but that was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thank you so much. It was so fun. All right, guys. Well, I will see you on the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon. Bye.